So I was resizing some 223 brass the other day, and this happened. And the weird thing about sticking a case is it really doesn't happen that often. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever stuck a case in a reloading die except for when I'm doing 223. But with 223, it feels like it happens a lot. Like every three to five rounds, no matter what lube or whatever I try to do, I'm just ripping the rim off of these suckers. So um, because I actually broke or bent rather a, a decapping rod um, trying to get a case out, I got one of these extraction kits. And so I figured, hey, uh, let's see how well it works. So going to be looking at some stuck case remover kits. Now, I um, originally bought this RCBS kit, and it comes with a couple of just steel rods and um, these two pieces, which are used to actually um, remove the expander ball out of the RCBS-style dies. But, but this is not an RCBS die. This is a Lee die that I've got this thing stuck in. So since this is kind of a, a made-up example, I, I just kind of did these until I stuck a case. Um, I've already got the expander removed, so that's not going to be a problem. And if you can get the expander out, and again, uh, with RCBS, these are designed to pull the expander out so that you can get in here. You can use these things, and you drop them in, and then you can pound that brass out with a hammer um, but uh, that doesn't work on most of my dies because I've only got like one set of RCBS dies so this is probably a good kit if you've got RCBS stuff so most of my stuff is uh, is Lee or Redding and so um, I'm gonna use a Lyman stuck case remover and see how it does getting this 223 brass out so let's open this thing up see what it's got yeah, yeah, standard stuff. Uh, most of these are pretty similar. So you get a drill bit to drill a hole in the bottom of the case. Then you get a tap to thread that hole. Um, screw that's going to match with that. And then we get uh, a couple of steel pieces. And I think, uh, yeah, so this is going to thread onto a standard die body. And then I'm presuming once this thing is kind of on, you can... Uh, Probably you're going to have that hole threaded and just be able to uh, screw this thing out. But let's look at uh, what the old destructions say. Destructions. All right. So. Yep. All right. Back out the decapping rod. Right. So you got to get the decapping rod out of the way. Um, with like redding dies. Um, this is important because uh, whenever you pull this thing out, the decapper is at this extension i don't have the decapping pin in but you'd actually have to unscrew this and you would actually leave uh the expander ball here or, you know whatever you want to call this bullet so uh once you get this unscrewed this would be left down in the case um, which is one reason why with these you can't use that rcbs kit because you would actually destroy um, this expander, right? It would be down in there and it would just destroy this thing. You know, if you leave it down in the case and then all of a sudden you're pounded on this thing with a, uh, with a steel rod, um, it's just going to end up, uh, mangled and crushed down in there. Cause this is really, really hard steel or some of these are going to be made out of uh, carbide. So they'll just smash up. So you can't leave them in there if you're going to be using one of those RCBS kits. But this one, we're going to drill into it, right? So, uh, put this thing in the die body, then we're going to clamp it in the vise, um, then we're going to drill into the base, right, then we uh, da, 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 drill completely through the primer pocket and the web, right, then we are going to tap that hole, right, then um, start the, you know, tap, da, 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 right, so that point, then we tighten the screw until the stuck case is pulled out of the die body. Um, recommended to spray some kind of oil and that's it so uh this second piece here this is actually just to turn the tap um so the tap fits in there and then you can use this so you don't have to have um a tap wrench so that's kind of why they include that so it's a complete kit you don't have to have another tap wrench to tap uh the brass 
I've heard some people say that the taps aren't the best quality. I don't know. It's just a high-speed steel, quarter-inch, 20 uh, tap. You know, I don't know what you expect. This thing was like 25 26 bucks. So let's give it a shot. All right. So uh, we got her threaded on. Next step, we're going to drill a hole. All right. And then we're going to thread that thing. So let me break out a drill. All right. So rather than using a vise, I'm going to not follow the directions. We'll see how this goes. And a bit of kickback on the old drill. All right. That's all it takes. Brass pretty soft. So I was pretty uh, firm with it. Um, now uh, we're going to use our little tap here. So there's one thing I would say is not the best is that, uh, I mean, the instructions say that the tap should just fit through here, or at least you should tap through this thing. And it even shows on the instructions. So I don't know about that. I don't know why you need to thread this steel body. That's kind of weird. Um, but it does say to go through this thing, so... I don't know, that's weird to me, um, because again, it's, uh, you know, I'm actually kind of tapping this steel a little, and maybe that's on purpose, but I don't know. Alright, so we're on the brass now, so let me get a hold of this thing. Didn't use any tapping fluid, but whenever I started this, I thought that I was just going to be working on brass. Didn't realize I was going to be tapping some steel. Switching over to some uh, Nipex pliers, because they're a little flatter. Those things are pretty awesome as far as good tools. These uh, flat jaw Nipex, Nipex, however you pronounce that, pretty good stuff. Probably should have used some cutting fluid late now. And probably also should use device, but again, eh, who uses proper tools? Again, I kind of wanted to do a Bubba version just because I do kind of imagine a lot of people would probably do what I'm doing. Um, so we got her tapped, I believe. So yeah, I, uh, I don't know if that's on purpose that I'm supposed to thread this. I guess we'll, we'll find out. Brush some of this brass out. Intrinsically, it, uh, it feels bad, right? Intuitively, I guess. Um, my intuition feels off with having to thread that hole. Because um, this thing, since this is steel, it's like, you know, it kind of feels like if you were actually supposed to uh, thread that, why wouldn't they do it, right? I mean, they're supplying this thing. If that thing need to be threaded quarter 20, why wouldn't they have already threaded it quarter 20? But whatever, it's what we're supposed to do. And, you know, that's the other thing is it's, you know, this passes through. So that's weird. Um, yeah, it's like they just didn't quite get the dimensions right on this hole. Don't know, right? Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. But uh, let's see. All right, so I'm supposed to put that in, and then this, I'm supposed to just tighten. So I guess the deal is, looking at the way this thing has to work, I'm going to hold it uh, with these pliers. I'm sure, again, if I was using a vise, this would probably work out a little better. And, you know, I just didn't... Didn't want to do that because I figure a lot of people may not have vices and you kind of want to know how well this thing works. So here we go. Yeah, there we go. That's the way it's supposed to go. So this, now that uh, this screw basically is going to pull the case out as I thread into it because um, it's pressing on this steel body. And as I screw in, it's extracting that case out of here. And actually, it didn't take much um, once you get it going. Because it's, it's uh, you know, sizing case, so, or sizing die, once you get it started, there you go. And then we can just ex unscrew that. And it got it right out. So it does work. Um, you know, overall, uh, what I would say is, uh, it does seem to work. Um, as far as the price, eh, it was like 25 30 bucks, something like that. Um, I'm not going to speak to longevity of this tap wrench, um, but overall, yeah, I, I think it's okay. Um, I, I don't understand why this wasn't sized correctly. Um, you know, why that's off, I'm not real sure. I didn't see anything really that, that suggested that this tap shouldn't go in through there. Seems like it should. 
Um, but other than that, I can't really complain. Like I said, I didn't really use it the way it's designed. It's designed to be used in a vise. I didn't even use it by hand. It still worked, so I got to give it credit. Um, I'd say that's that's a valid tool. It seems like that's going to do what I really want it to do. It comes with everything you need. Um, you know, if you've got a vise, this is it. I use you know, wrenches to hold on to stuff, which is inappropriate, but that's what I did, and it still worked, so uh, no real complaints, I guess, um, for the Lyman Stuck Case Remover Kit. Not too shabby, not too bad, so anyway, that was just a quick hitter just to show you uh, that, little, that little tool, so that's it. If you got any comments or questions, just leave them down below. Thanks.